Hey everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today I'm here to talk to you about the RTX 3050 from Nvidia. I have a card, I've tested a card. But I know you guys are all going to want to know or are going to be saying this isn't a graphics card that we can buy or is it going to be another one we just cannot buy. So I've put a little bit of extra legwork in and I've had a big ring around to try and find out how many cards there actually are going to be around at MSRP at launch. And the number was a lot higher than I was expecting, if I'm completely honest. But I've tested a reference design for you today, which is the entry level MSRP graphics card. I'll also talk to you about some of the prices that you're likely to be seeing once the MSRP ones run out or fizzle out, however you'd like to put it. And then we'll really talk about did RTX make a lot of difference on a cheap £239 graphics card? So yes, the baby 3050, RTX 3050. Now the RTX side of it is the bit that really makes the difference because it wasn't GTX like it so easily could have been they added the RTX in so in reality you've got the option of ray tracing and more importantly especially at this price point DLSS because at the end of the day I know you don't live or haven't lived under a rock but DLSS actually does enable things to be boosted and we needed the RTX side of it so that we got the DLSS goodness in reality. Now with the DLSS goodness, um, you're going to be paying from £239 of your, or 239 of your great British beer tokens for the privilege of owning a 3050. Now I know everyone says um, uh, MSRP prices are mythical. We're never going to be able to buy one at MSRP. And so much recently that has been the case, but I have had a phone around, done my maths. I actually know that there are brands out there with many hundreds of graphics cards at MSRP. And in total, you are, they are, there is going to be around and about, maybe a little bit more because obviously I can't talk to everyone, but we are, should be talking around the four digit mark at MSRP. Not all of the graphics cards in total, just the ones at £239. Now the Gigabyte one that I am reviewing here today, a very basic Eagle card, you can see it's been built to a budget. It's got a plastic back plate. It's, it, it just works at the end of the day. It's not built for umpteen performance. It's not built for flashy lights. It's not built to feel like a tank. It's built to give you frame rates on a budget. Now, some of you are going to say that £239 is still too expensive. And to be fair, there are going to be those of you out there that you are never going to please anyway because it's got a green sticker on it. But we will talk about the performance because one of the things now, I'm going to start off with control, but control is double-sided. So control is both very, very intensive, but is obviously an NVIDIA game as well. Now the first slide in that it comes in, you'll see that it's gonna be around the 60 frames per second mark. That is just control on ultra at 1080p. The second slide that comes in, that is control with just ray tracing enabled. And you'll see they dip. You've gone from about 50 frames per second, sorry, about 60 frames per second down to around the 30 frames per second mark. Big step down, but in reality, you know, there are days gone by that I would have said 30 frames per second wasn't too bad for an, a very, very intensive game. Think of Crisis. But the third one is the almost important one. And that is when you've got 1080p ray tracing and DLSS. And you can see that DLSS does bring those frames straight back up. Now, there is uh, another one that I can show you. Now, this is Metro uh, Exodus. Again, it's a very, very stressful game but you can have the uh, ray tracing and then you can also, when you slide it in on top, add in the DLSS on top yet again. Because there is options within the game. You can't turn ray tracing off with uh, Metro Exodus. 
Um, not with the enhanced edition anyway, but you can obviously add in the DLSS on the top. And we have this turn to balance. Now with Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk is another one that we can do a uh, multi-pass on for you. you uh, we test with two separate ones, the Ultra preset and then the Ultra Ray Tracing preset. Now the Ultra Ray Tracing pre preset uh, automatically turns DLSS on as well. So we've not done an on and an off, but you can see that there isn't a uh, big step down in performance. And instead, you get an increase in performance, even though you've got the ray tracing turned on as well. Watch Dogs is another one that we uh, test three times for you. So you get it with the ray tracing off. This is your very vanilla start. Then what you do is we go on to the ultra preset with the ray tracing, and then we do one with ray tracing and the DLSS on. So you get three graphs on this one just to split it out so that you can see. But with Watchdogs, as you can see, with the just the ray tracing on, you dip below that 30 frames per second mark. You're looking at 20 and 25 there. It's it's really not particularly playable. But the ray tracing, uh, sorry, the DLSS does bring it up a bit. This is one of the ones though that when you have a look with the ray tracing off, the Watchdogs was the really the one that was the most difficult kind of one to say that the DLSS was making it playable. And like I said, you do need to remember this is only at 1080. Uh, so you, it, this is one of the games that you definitely would need to go in there, play around and optimise to try and get yourself a decent playing rate. But it's a very, very good graphics card for us to be able to share the results with you so that you can see that it is quite stringent and stressful. And these are the games for us that we want because at the end of the day, something stressful like this makes uh, graphics card manufacturers have to work that little bit harder. So for 239, the graphics card, I think, performs quite well. You've seen there it's regularly, regularly tracing trading places with a 1070, for example, yes, which is a couple of generations older. Uh, Occasionally, it's around a 2060 as well, which is a fairly okay point to be, but more often than not, at the moment, it was behind. You needed that DLSS to kind of push it that next level on. But when the 2060 was around, you were obviously talking about a more significantly more expensive card. And this is also, when we start talking about expenses, when we need to start talking around things around MSRP, because MSRP is fine, but the card's never seem to be around for very long and then also they don't then seem to get replenished much afterwards it's almost like at launch when they're gone they're gone and sometimes you get lucky with batches follow through but the brands do end up kind of shying away from the msrp after launch and then you kind of you're then looking upwards think the average price for one of these is going to be around the 300 pounds mark. So I don't know what Aorus or Gigabyte are gonna be charging for the Eagle Overclock, but that's probably there and thereabouts where you're gonna be looking at that sort of pricing. It's around that 299 mark. I know that uh, there is not the entry level one, but the Tough from Asus is going to be coming through around the 299 mark. And I say around because I can't quote because they've not actually given me any official figures, but I think you're gonna see a lot of cards coming in around there. Now, it coming in around the 300 pound mark is better than it being around the 400 pound mark, but it does make you sit and wonder that little bit more. But it's at the end of the day, the way that we need to be thinking about this is it is all gonna come down to stock. Can they make enough of them? Are they going to end up on eBay for 500 quid? Do we need real life snipers for people that are scalping? I think we definitely know that the last one probably should be yes. But in an ideal world, 300 pounds for one of these is always gonna be a bit of a But it's not in an ideal world. And I think I'd rather be paying 299 for one of these and getting a half decent one rather than having to go on eBay and have uh, a colonoscopy for the privilege of getting one for something like £450 because there aren't any. So I think I'd rather there be more at 299 than none at all available 
other than on eBay. And I think it's going to kind of depend where you want to swing with it. It's all going to come down to personal preference. And at the end of the day, yes, I've been lucky enough to get one at launch. But even this, because there aren't very many of them, they get moved on fairly quickly because they want to send them around so lots of people can get to play with them. So the only real nice thing that I have to talk to you about today is I know there is going to be a lot of them at launch. Sadly though, lots of you are gonna be watching this video after launch. And when you're sat there watching this and you can go and have a look, I'm probably gonna be looking to see how many of them are left as well. So let's keep our fingers crossed and hope these don't disappear in seconds like some of the other launches have in the past. And let's also hope that there's enough of these, that the prices stay at the right end of the market and the scalpers on eBay and the scalping e-tailers don't start taking the mickey out of us either. So that's enough from me today. I'm going to love you and leave you. This has been the tiniest one with this RTX 3050 review out. I messed that up. I I'm not even going to cut. I'm just going to go ding. Love you, sis.